What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this week at WWDC, Apple announced the latest software update coming soon to the iPhone, iOS 15. Of course, this new update includes a whole bunch of new features and changes that Apple talked about during their keynote. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the big new stuff as well as some other hidden features and add-ons that can be found in this new iOS 15 update. There's definitely a lot to go over here, so I won't waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and get right into it and see what iOS 15 has in store. First things first, I'm sure you're already asking, when can you get iOS 15 on your device? And the answer to that question is likely in the fall. That's when Apple pushes out the major software updates alongside the launch of the newest iPhones. But obviously there is a way to get the iOS 15 beta early. That's what I have here on my device. If you have an Apple developer account, you too can go ahead and download the beta profile right now and start using it. And later this summer, there will likely be a public beta for iOS 15 available as well, so look out for that. As far as which devices will get iOS 15, the short answer to that is every device that got iOS 14. Apple isn't dropping support for any devices with this update, so everything from the iPhone 6S and newer will get this update, and that includes the original iPhone SE and even the iPod Touch, which is actually pretty crazy if you think about it. Apple is still updating their devices now that are approaching six years old, so even more of an argument in favor of Apple devices being really solid long-term investments. So on the surface, iOS 15 looks and feels pretty similar to iOS 14. There's no real major visual changes, at least right off the bat, but there are a few apps that did receive redesigns and some major feature add-ons. And the first of which is actually the weather app. You can see we get a totally fresh look and feel with updated weather graphics moving around in the background that change with the forecast and the time of day. There's also also multiple new map views, which allow you to see temperature heat maps across the country, precipitation, and even air quality. And I think this is super useful if you travel a lot or just want a more broad overview of what's going on in different parts of the world. These are definitely some interesting add-ons to the weather app. There are also some additional new weather and forecast related data points. And all in all, while this might not be the most exciting new update, I think the weather app here has been greatly improved. Another app that gets a pretty major redesign is Safari. Safari. And I think this might end up being a little controversial, actually. Basically, Apple here inverted the toolbar. They brought it down to the bottom of the screen. It sort of floats along there. And this definitely takes some getting used to. As you scroll down a web page, the bar gets quite a bit smaller and kind of out of the way. And I think overall, this seems to allow for a bigger, better view of a given website. It's just the kind of change where I find myself automatically tapping the top of the screen where the old toolbar used to be. And some websites are aren't quite optimized for this bottom of the screen floating toolbar either. It can get in the way sometimes. When you type in a website or search for something using the toolbar, you also get a little different look with some shared links popping up there for messages and some other options. The tab view in Safari has also been refreshed a little bit as well. So we get a new look with all your web pages open there. You can move around the open web pages as well. Tapping and holding brings up an additional menu. You can also swipe across the bottom of the screen to jump from one open tab to another. And that's something I actually really like. And I think overall, while I appreciate the efforts in trying something new with Safari, I'm still not quite sure all this is the right setup, though I'll see how I feel once I get used to it. Apple Maps also sees some changes and new features in iOS 15. And depending on the city that you're in, you actually might get a bunch of new stuff. Certain locations like San Francisco, LA, New York, London, all have really detailed and enhanced 3D maps to give you an incredibly accurate view of the area. There's improved driving directions, transit information, updated place cards for landmarks and other popular spots, and immersive new walking directions with an AR view of the streets and the surrounding areas that allow you to get an accurate real-time look at where you're currently at. Now again, it definitely is going to depend on where in the world you live as to whether or not some of these changes will be useful or even available to you, but it's great to see Apple continuing to make improvements to their own Maps app. On the home screen, while nothing has really changed visually, or even functionally for that matter, we do get some new default widget options. There's now widgets available for the App Store, Game Center, Sleep, Find My, and a few other small changes and updates to other various Apple widgets as well. There's nothing too major, but you will find a few new additional things you could potentially add to your home screen if you'd like. Also on the home screen, search has been improved.
improved to include more results from more apps. And this is gonna be based on what it is you're looking for. So for example, searching for mountains here not only brings up the usual web, maps, and Siri results, but you'll now see pictures and saved images from photos that may include mountains as well, which is kind of cool. You can also search for, say, all the screenshots on your device, then it'll pull up a selection of recent screenshots. You can even search for specific words and phrases inside your pictures as well. And this leads me into actually a really great new feature within photos, and that's live text. Now, with any image or screenshot you have on your phone, you can actually pull some or all the text off of it to select, copy, look up, or even translate. This works with written text in an image, typed text, basically whatever it can detect, it'll try and give you. Just simply tap or drag your finger around, just like any notes or documents or message. And this also works inside the camera app as well with the viewfinder. So now if you hold up some words or text to the camera, the camera app will detect it and a new icon will appear at the bottom that selects the text and allows you to interact with it. Obviously, this is a feature that other phones have had before, but it's great to finally have in the iPhone at least, and I've already found this to be super useful. One new feature that Apple highlighted heavily during their keynote is focus. And to me, this is like an enhanced do not disturb mode. It can be found in Control Center and in the Settings app. Now, the regular do not disturb is still there, but you'll also see the ability to set up specific focus modes for certain times of the day in which you can mute certain apps, only allow notifications from a select number of contacts, and even share a sort of away message to those people who might be trying to contact you. You have complete control over who gets through, which apps will notify you, and more. And you can set up a whole bunch of different focus modes from work schedules to school to bedtime and even add some additional custom ones if you'd like. You can set the time of day these certain focus modes will be on. You'd have them turn on automatically and I think this is a great way to sort of control the distractions and keep only what's important in front of you during specific times. There's really a lot of great stuff to work with here. Sort of going hand in hand with focus mode, there's also a new notifications summary option. And while this isn't necessarily the new revamped notification style we were hoping for, this mode allows for app notifications to be grouped and presented to you in summary during certain parts of the day that you choose. So rather than clogging up your notification panel all day long, you can now get groups of app notifications only when you need them. So say maybe at the end of the day or in the morning when you first wake up. The general notification screen has changed a little bit visually as well, but besides enabling notification summary, most everything else with your app notification notifications remains basically the same. Another app that was showcased heavily during the keynote is FaceTime. And Apple is bringing a ton of changes and updates here to sort of bring FaceTime in line with the likes of Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and other professional video conferencing software. So first off, you can now FaceTime with anyone even Android devices and Windows computers, by simply just sharing a link with those folks who you wanna join your video call. This is really great and definitely opens up FaceTime to allow everyone to easily communicate, regardless of the platform they're on. During a FaceTime call, you can now also share your screen, share a TV show, movie, or video, share songs, and more. There's also a new portrait mode for video to blur out the background if you'd like. Spatial audio is supported now with FaceTime as well, and this sort of spreads out the voices of the people you're talking to based on their positioning on screen. There's honestly a ton of great stuff here coming to FaceTime, and I think all these changes make it not only a solid professional platform for conferencing now, but also the perfect setup for friends and family to not only stay connected, but enjoy a whole bunch of content together as well. A couple other little things worth noting, messages gets revamped a little bit, conversations, pins, photos, links, and more will now appear across your iPhone and various apps for easy access access. So exactly like you saw earlier with website links automatically popping up in Safari from messages, there are additional accessibility and privacy options scattered throughout iOS 15. So for example, you can now customize accessibility settings for individual apps, which is great. If you'd like certain apps to say be easier to read with bigger text or other layout changes, you can do that now with individual apps. On the privacy side of things, you can now get a breakdown of the last seven days of app activity. And this allows you to see what apps are utilizing 
visualizing your mic location and other things. The wallet app also gains some additional abilities, including support for keys, government issued ID, and more. This obviously is gonna depend on the connected devices and state and local government support, but eventually you could have, say, your car keys and your driver's license inside the wallet app and not have to carry anything else with you. Siri now also works offline for some specific tasks and commands, such as timers, settings, playback controls, and other on-device default apps. And finally, if you are an AirPod user, there are a few new things here. There's not only additional notification announcements now, third-party apps, and even reminders, but there's also Dolby Atmos support for AirPods Pro and AirPods Max with dynamic head tracking, and more accurate Find My Device support if you lose an AirPod nearby. All in all, Apple has continued to improve the AirPods via software updates, which is really great to see. So there you go, those are some of the big changes and new features coming to iOS 15. There's obviously a ton more little stuff here and there, and maybe even some stuff I might have missed, but what do you guys think about this upcoming update? Were there features or add-ons that you were hoping to see that maybe didn't make the cut? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.